Hello, Rob Vane here. In this video, we're going to be doing a contextual analysis of Jafar Panahi's Taxi Tehran, the second film we'll be studying for Component 2, Section A Global Film. In terms of the areas we need to be studying for these films, they will be the key elements of film form, meaning and response, and what we'll be focusing on this video, which is the context of the film's production. Now, first things first, we need to consider some background to this film. So, pause the video, write this down. Okay, so, Taxi Tehran, made in 2015, directed by Jafar Panahi. It's Iranian. It was released by Celluloid Dreams. It's in Persian. In terms of genre, it is a docu-fiction or a docu-drama. In other words, it is a fictional, dramatic story but it's presented in the form of documentary. Now, because Iran is a totalitarian theocracy, the actors are non-professional actors who are acting anonymously, so none of the actors are named for fear of reprisals from the government. One of the few characters who is actually named is the human rights lawyer Nazrin Satuda, and we'll be talking more about her later. Like a number of his films, particularly the previous two, this is not a film of closed curtain, the film was made despite the fact that Banahi has now been banned from making films for over 20 years in Iran. So this was shot in his taxi, and his previous films were shot in extreme secrecy in his own apartment and in a private house. Nonetheless, these films haven't been smuggled out to the international audience of one great international claim. This one in particular won the Golden Bear at the 65th Berlin International Film Festival. A very highly prestigious award. Now, another bit of context, and this is good because it links in with Mustang, is one of his um, earlier films was Offside, which was released in 2006. That's a film about young girls who are obsessed with football and want to go and watch a World Cup qualifying match, but they're not allowed to by law because they are women. It is illegal for women to go to football matches in Iran. Female fans are not allowed to enter football stadiums in Iran on the grounds that there will be a high risk of violence or verbal abuse against them. This film was inspired by the director's daughter who decided to attend the game anyway. So it's quite a common thing that women in Iran will dress up as men and sneak in to football matches. Many have been arrested for this, for the crime of essentially dressing as men. It's itself illegal. So this film was shot in Iran, but it was banned in that country. It's illegal to screen that movie. So this is true of a lot of Panahi's films. So it's interesting that that ties so nicely the Mustang where the girls sneak out and go and try and go to a football match. Now, some social political context. I apologise if I'm butchering this pronunciation, but I believe it's Sianami. Sianami is an important word to know for this. So I'd write this down and make a good note of this because it's going to be very relevant to your analysis of the film. In Persian, Sianami means portraying like black. It's a term used to describe films, or indeed any artwork, allegedly presenting a negative or dark image of Iran. It is frequently used by political and religious conservatives to denounce any work of art which they consider to be critical of Iran and Iran's Revolutionary Council government. Many Iranian critics believe that films portraying a gloomy and dark image of social conditions under the Islamic Republic or an exotic and primitive image of Iranians in rural settings only seek to win awards at Western film festivals. And to be fair, they've got a point, because, the, you know, films like Offside and Taxi Tehran were banned in Iran. You couldn't watch them in Iran if you wanted to. They are only watched by Westerners. And they're made for Westerners, essentially as a kind of anti-Islamic republic propaganda, pro-democratic, pro-secular messages that make the totalitarian, um, theocratic government of Iran look bad. They do, frankly, have a point in that respect. 
What they're complaining about, though, is this idea of Orientalism, the Edward Syed concept, the way in which Edward Syed said that the Occident, the West, tends to portray what would be the Orient, which is anything other than the West, as either threatening, as other, as dangerous, or at best as exotic and exciting both of which are equally patronizing, he would argue. So that's what they're really complaining about here. They're complaining about these ideas, these sort of orientalize Iran for what is perceived as a hostile foreign audience. So, Sinami is a good word to remember. Pause the video, write that down. Now, we have to consider the political situation in Iran the political, social, economic context. <clears throat> Iran, as you can see, is not three. It is a theocratic dictatorship. It does not have any freedom. Out of a possible score of 100, the Freedom House give it 16%. Right? Even worse than last year, where it was 17%. So things have been getting worse. So this is in 2021. It is a theocratic dictatorship. There is no individual freedom. The state has a great deal of control over you. And in this case, it is a government run by the Islamic Church. Okay? The Islamic Republic of Iran does hold elections regularly, but they don't live up to the democratic standards that we expect from a democracy, due in part to the influence of hardline guardian council, which is an unelected religious body that disqualifies all candidates it deems insufficiently loyal to the clerical establishment. So the clerics of the church, right? Ultimate power rests in the hands of the country's supreme religious leader, the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, and the unelected institutions under his control. These institutions, including security forces, so the army, the police, the secret service, etc., and the judiciary, so the courts, play a major role in the suppression of dissent and other restrictions on civil liberties. So this is a theocratic Islamo-fascist state where ordinary citizens have very little in the way of freedom. The authorities routinely violate basic due process standards, so the rule of law, particularly in political sensitive cases. Activists are arrested without warrants are held indefinitely without formal charges, are denied access to legal counsel or any contact with the outside world, many convicted on vague security charges in trials that sometimes only last a few minutes, lawyers who take up the case of dissidents have been jailed and banned from practicing, and a number have been forced to leave the country to escape freedom to escape the freedom from the way they've been prosecuted, according to the Freedom House. This is relevant to this story because Jafar Panahi himself has been arrested and imprisoned and the implication from the story is tortured. Iran also has the death penalty. And it is second only to China in the number of executions it carries out every year, putting hundreds of people to death every year, often through hanging. Convicts can be executed for offences other than murder, like drug trafficking, and for crimes they committed when they were younger than 18 years old. So at the beginning of this film, at the very beginning, there's this debate between this male and female passenger in Panahi's taxi. The woman is a teacher, and she is much more liberal. She's um, talking about the fact that, you know, people often commit crimes because of their circumstances, whereas the man in the front advocates executing people in even higher numbers. The irony, of course, being he himself as a criminal. So, definitely make a note of this, because that relates specifically to a sequence in the film. So pause it and make a note. Even more important is the fact that <clears throat> one of the characters in the film is Nazarene Satuda, a human rights lawyer. And suddenly in 2013, so four years after this film was made, this she's a prominent human rights lawyer, was arrested and sentenced to 33 additional years in prison and 148 lashes, so whips, she's whipped basically, for 
her activities of being a human rights lawyer. She'd, been in pri- she'd already been in prison serving a five-year sentence since the, since the middle of October 2018, and she was given even more time in prison and brutally whipped. And she's one of the characters in the film playing herself. In October 2020, he was temporarily released from prison amongst concerns about her health following a hunger strike, so she refused to eat or drink, which is a, a common tactic amongst political prisoners. So this is especially relevant, so definitely make a note of that, because it talks to how bad the situation is in Iran. And this is a film that is advocating for freedom, telling Western audiences how bad things are in Iran. So pause the video, make a note. Then we have to consider gender. You could get questions asking about the representations of gender in the film. Iran, for all of its citizens, is very repressive. There are very few social freedoms in Iran. They're very heavily restricted. But it's particularly bad for women. It's a very misogynistic country. Women are subject to obligatory rules on dress and personal appearance. Those who are deemed to have violated the rules face state harassment, fines and arrest, like those girls who wanted to go and watch the football match. Particularly relevant to this film, though, is the bit where they have to take the badly injured and dying man to the hospital, and he wants to record his last will and testament because he's afraid that his wife won't inherit what she's entitled to, and in fact go to his brother, because things are inherited through the patriarchal male line not to necessarily to their wives so women do not enjoy equal rights in anything let alone divorce and child custody disputes according to the gender gap index of the world economic forum conducted in 2021 uh, iran is 150 out of 156 countries in terms of freedom for women so it is very misogynistic and repressive towards women. 23.5% of married Iranian women have been affected by domestic violence since the inception of their marriage, so almost a quarter. And 72.3%, so knocking on three quarters of Iranian women, said they continue to face social, mental and educational violence. So whilst the women in this film don't appear especially repressed, there are strong misogynistic elements at play in terms of the wider context that we need to take into account. So, again, some good facts and figures to write down to bear in mind for your essays. So before you watch the film, key things to consider. <clears throat> if you take this from a Stuart Hall point of view in terms of the dominant hegemonic meanings that the filmmaker wants you to accept, how was this film representing Iran? Is it representing it in a positive way? Is it representing it in a negative way? Does it conform to or challenge the expectations and stereotypes you expect, both politically and religiously, but also in terms of representations of gender and sexuality and age and social class and all those other things that we can be represented by? So, as I said, gender, age, nationality and social class, but also how is it representing the country? How is it representing the government of Iran? Consider what binary opposites are there in this narrative. So you Claude Levi Strauss, binary opposites. Secular, religious. Free, not free. Democracy, theocracy, etc., etc. But then you've got to consider how you responded to it. Um... As we said, this is a film that's not really made for Iranians. It's made for maybe expatriate Iranians abroad, but particularly I think it's aimed at Westerners in order to educate them about the situation in Iran. So, as I said, I suspect that it's highly likely that few of you have seen a film like this before. And as I said, what we're trying to do in these second year films is try and get you out of your comfort zone, show you the kinds of films that are maybe different to what you're used to to challenge you a bit 
So think about it. How does this film compare to the kind of films you've seen before? How did you react to this film? Bearing in mind that you're not really the target audience for it. But how did you react to it? How did it make you feel? And how was the film made in such a way as to make you feel that way? So think about it. The director wants you to feel a certain thing about this film. Did you feel that way? If so, how did he make you feel that way? Think about the characters. Think about Murray Smith and his theories. You know, who do you ally with? You know, exact, you know, who are your favorite characters? Why were they your favorite character? Are they characters you didn't like? Why didn't you like them? What were your favorite parts of the film? Why do you like the bits? Is there any bits of the film you didn't like? Why not? It's not enough to say why well, I didn't like. I was rubbish. But why? Why was it rubbish? Yeah, you obviously won a lot of awards. So what was it about it that you didn't like or you didn't react to? Is it because it was out of your comfort zone? You didn't know what to think about it? Is it you didn't understand it? Is it because you didn't empathize with any of the characters? What? Okay, so these are the things you need to be considering when you're watching the film. Above and beyond the way in which film form, so narrative structure, cinematography, editing, mise-en-scene, and sound are all being used to manipulate you in a certain way. So, don't forget to flip learning. Make sure that you've watched as many of the videos in the playlist as possible. Especially make sure that you've read the Taxi Tehran focus fact sheet from the exam board and the sections in the textbook about the films because that's why I picked them. If you've got any questions, you know where I am. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye all.